Hello and welcome to this video for ZigBee 802.15.4. In this video I want to explain the medium access control of the standard. So medium access control means if we have several RFP servers reduced function devices then they somehow want to access the medium and there might be contention. They might try to send at the same time or almost at the same time and therefore we have to follow a special algorithm. If we look into the standard then we see that during the active phase we have two different time frames. So the active phase starts with the beacon package as you can see here the red marked package and this is sent at the beginning from the coordinator to the reduced function devices, to the surrounding reduced function devices. And then after that there's the contention access period. This is the blue marked area and in this contention access period several devices compete for the medium. So they compete for being in for the communication and for being able to send their messages to the coordinator. In a minute I will explain how this algorithm for the competition takes place in each reduced function device. After this contention access period there's the contention free period and this might happen in the active phase. The coordinator tells all the surrounding reduced function devices if there is such a contention free period and if it takes place then the surrounding devices know that in this phase they do not compete for the medium but that there are dedicated slots for the communication and in these dedicated slots no collisions can occur. In general the contention access period follows a CM, C CSMA a carrier sense model access scheme so this is already known from other standards and it's a little bit twisted here for this special standard 802.15.4. Now how will we organize this contention access period if for example several devices like this one here, this one and the third one compete for the medium. They want to send, let's assume they want to send almost at the same time a message to the coordinator and then the algorithm somehow has to assure that no collision occurs uh, when the coordinator receives the package. Now this is the overall algorithm and we start with some information from the beacon package for example if it's slotted and uh, this then decides if we go into this algorithm for the contention and if we have to follow all these steps. This information if it is slotted as I said before is sent with the beacon package from the coordinator to the reduced function devices, to the surrounding reduced function devices. And if there is no slotted mode then the reduced function devices just go into their slot and transfer their messages regarding to their assigned slot. Now here we want to talk about the contention and therefore we have to follow all these steps below here and in more detail now on the following slides I will explain the algorithm for the contention access. So let's zoom in here a little bit. In the first part you see that the algorithm starts and that we have to decide first if it's slotted or not depending on the beacon package which sends this information. Then we have uh, also some uh, setting for parameters. We initialize this NB to zero number of backoffs that have occurred already during this contention access period. So we start fresh, so to say, with zero number of backoffs. And we also initial, initialize this uh, CW to two because we have to count later on a certain number of contention windows. Now, if we have a battery life extension turned on, then we modify this uh, BE, this backoff exponent, but uh, let's assume that we don't have this battery life extension now here and therefore we go with a MacMinBE which is a kind of constant in the standard and 
um, we set this back of exponent to this constant. And then the reduced function device, which wants to send a package, has to find the start of the next back of period. So that means that after the beacon is sent, it goes to the next possible time slot for the start of the algorithm. So such a unit back of period is 20 symbols long and the reduced function device has then to wait until this time is over set, such that it is starting exactly at such a starting point for a back of period. So in detail that means that let's assume there was a beacon package like the red one here and then it adjusts this its time to start with the algorithm after at this time here at exactly this time at the next start of the back of period. You can see that, the, that there is a maximum time for the beacon which is reserved. It's uh, this time here and uh, in this case here the beacon is a little bit shorter so that we can start earlier with our algorithm, with our CSMA algorithm. In the standard there is a certain constant for the back of period, for the time of the back of period and three of these back of periods are summed up to such a base slot. And now the challenge is that the reduced function device which wants to send a message has to wait a certain number of back of periods and therefore it counts this CW variable but only if it sees that the channel is free. So let's go into this algorithm here. Um, first we have to wait for a random number of back of periods that's done in this part here first and after this random time of waiting we check if the remaining time is enough for sending the package which should be sent to the coordinator. If this is true then we can continue, if not then the reduced function device has to wait for the next beacon package for the next contention access period in which it is allowed to send again the messages from the reduced function device to the coordinator. And then we go into the detailed waiting period and the, the checking if the channel is free and therefore we do such a CCA, a channel clear assessment first. And the channel clear assessment means that the device which wants to send the package checks if there's other communication taking place in the medium, in the radio medium. So now of course we can have the hidden terminal problem that um, another participant in the network, like if you see in this picture, we could be here, another participant could be here or here, and then the participants might not see each other regarding to their radio communication. So if some package transmission takes place from this node, this other node might not see that this first node here sends a message. So this is actually a usual situation in radio communication networks that the participants might not see each other, but we want to overcome this problem with this uh, CSMA and we have to take into account that a collision might occur even though we follow this algorithm. So the channel clear assessment first checks if other participants can be seen from this participant which wants to send a message. And if the channel is free, then we are here and we evaluate it to Yes, for example, the channel is free and then we count down the contention window. We again check at the next back of period. If the channel is still free, then we count down again and a third time we count down. And if the countdown, the constant contention window is then down to zero, then we can use the channel, we can send our message from the reduced function device to the coordinator. 
But of course, during this checking, if the channel is free, it can also happen that the channel is not free, that the reduced function device, which wants to send a message, detects that there is another device sending a message, and then it evaluates the channel free to no, and it will then start over again with first waiting for a random period, and then again trying to check if the channel is free and trying to come in this branch of the algorithm. And in order to start over again with this trial for a free message, we have to assign the fresh values, the two and uh, to the contention window constant and the BE is also initialized again. And we count how many number of backoffs we already did. So how many times we had to see that the channel is not free and that it is not possible to send the message. And then we count this NB and if we come over a certain maximum with this number of backoffs we already did, then we signal an error to the upper layer and Therewith we inform the upper layer that it was not possible to send the message and the upper layer then might do something special due to this maximum number of backoffs. Or the upper layer just decides to again go into this contention access period maybe with the next beacon. So in this part of the algorithm you see that we have a path to check for the channel if the channel is free and then count down here the contention windows and if we count it down three times then we are able to assign the channel and we are able to send our message from the reduced function device to the coordinator. And this is an independent part of the algorithm so we do it in the reduced function device which wants to send a message and which has to pay attention to other participants in the network. Here we can see a small example. So first we have our beacon package, this is the red one. Then we have our random waiting time of four backoff periods. We then decide for the CCA, for the channel clear assessment. We check if the channel is clear. Here in this case, there is no other participant sending any message and then after we uh, checked the last channel clear assessment and decided that the channel is clear then we can start our transmission this is the green part and we send our message to the coordinator so and in this part you can see that there is some random time in the algorithm in this case we diced a four and therefore we have to wait four backoff periods here until we can start with the first channel clear assessment. After the message is sent properly, it might be decided that the confirmation has to be sent from the receiver and then the send message is the green one here and we have to wait a certain time after the message was sent and we can then send the confirmation from the receiver to the origin of the message and then the sender of the message knows that the message was received or that maybe errors in the message were detected and that the message should be sent again. As you can see here, the confirmation message has to start at a certain backoff period, so you have to wait before you can send your confirmation message. So that's all for the contention access period and this is the algorithm for the access of the medium in the contention access period for the standard 802.15.4 which is the basis for the Zigbee standard.